the accession of Poland to the European Union uh, 10 years ago now, in 2004, there has, has been a, a large wave of um, migration uh, to Northern Ireland from, from Poland. And um, at the moment, um, according to Census 2011, there are about 20,000 uh, Polish uh, migrants living in, in Northern Ireland. And they constitute about a fourth of all um, foreign, foreign born, uh, the, the, the fourth of all foreign born residents uh, in Northern Ireland are Polish. And um, Polish migrants are mainly concentrated in Belfast, uh, Craig Avon, Newry and Moore, Duncanon, Ballymena and Coleraine. Uh, but as you can see from, from this uh, picture, uh, there are Polish born residents in all, all areas of Northern Ireland. And again from census, we know that Eastern European migrants, including Polish migrants, are disproportionately uh, represented in elementary process plant and machine operations occupations. So about half of them, of Eastern European migrants, are, are working in, in these industries. Uh, so often uh, migrants are uh, seen um, solely as, as workers or perceived as workers uh, without much consideration given to other aspects of their, their lives as, as, as hum human beings. So it's often uh, there is um, a few that migrants' decisions are based only on uh, the kind of labor market situation and economic factors. So they come here to fill the high demand uh, when there is a high demand for uh, workers, and then when the demand decreases in recession, then they will uh, uh, go, go home. Uh, however, um, the picture is not so simple as that, as we can, we can see that uh, Polish migrants have uh, been living here now for 10 years, and uh, their return uh, to Poland uh, seems in many cases unlikely. And uh, uh, we argue that uh, migrants uh, should be seen more as workers. They should be seen as full and equal members of society uh, with uh, uh, rights and responsibilities. And that we would need to consider a migrant's mental health and, and well-being as much as anybody else's mental health and, and well-being. Because as we will, pres uh, will be presenting in this presentation, um, migration um, is connected to a large number of mental health problems, including anxiety, depression, drug and alcohol abuse, and we've also seen a high number of suicides in the, in the Polish community in Northern Ireland. Um, but the relationship between migration and mental health is almost also an important public health challenge, um, because um, the social cost of untreated illness, mental illness or other illness, is likely to be higher than the cost of providing adequate uh, prevention and, and care. And, and that we, we need healthy workers, so we need to look after the health of all, all workers, including migrants. Okay. Uh, and um, in our study, we uh, collected uh, 17 interviews nine of them with key professionals working with Polish migrants uh, suffering from mental health problems. So uh, with key professionals, um, we mean um, professionals such as community workers, GPs, and interpreters, amongst others. And then we also conducted interviews with Polish migrants in Belfast, Newry and Moore, Portadown, Craig Avon, and Ballymena. And interviews with um, all Polish-born participants, whether they were migrants or professionals, were conducted in, in Polish. Um, starting with uh, social isolation um, of, of Polish migrants in, in Northern Ireland, our preliminary findings suggest that uh, Polish migrants um, are still at uh, still working through and struggling through the process of uh, of settlement. Even though uh, many of them have been here for almost ten years, they feel that they haven't um, s um, they haven't put down the the roots as yet. And at the same time, um, many uh, report that they. Um, that they are unable to draw upon their ties back in Poland with their families and friends because those ties have been loosened. So at this point, uh, many migrants are seen as uh, in the situation of in-between where 
uh, of non-belonging. So they're not able to, to draw on the relationships in Poland and, and in here. And this is very important in terms of um, any mental health um, struggles. Um, the fact that um, Polish migrants don't have um, extended families here and friends um, also um, uh, means that they have very limited support in terms of um, practical help uh, and um, amongst others in, in childcare. Um, having unusually high level of self-reliance, uh, um, um, uh, migrants are um, their relationships are at, um, at quite a, a large strain. So uh, they're unable to um, combine their work commitments of uh, very often, as Anne said, working in, um, you know, in industries where they're uh, working long hours, uh, they're working shift works, or, uh, irregular hours. They're unable to combine it with parental duties, which puts an immense uh, strain on their relationships. And at the same time, they... Um, lack uh, quality time to spend in the couple. So uh, as an effect of that, we observed that um, there's a lot of cases amongst Polish migrants, uh, a lot of cases of uh, family breakdowns after, after migration. Um, and also associated with that um, is the shift in gender roles. Um, and this is partly related to the fact that um, Polish men were more affected by the uh, by the effects of economic downturn than uh, Polish women, because they were employed in the industries that were hit harder by the, uh, by the economic downturn. And therefore, um, migrants very often coming from still traditional families in Poland, um, with a patriarchal view on the roles of uh, men and women in the families, and expecting that when men would be the main breadwinners in the family, are presented with a situation when they are dependent on their female partners um, in, in Northern Ireland. Um, another a very important issue uh, that was found is the language barrier. Um, uh, many interviewees um, um, stated that uh, this affected their well-being, the inability to, uh, to, to speak um, English. Uh, this is quite an, quite an often finding in other studies in, in health of migrants. However, in the case of um, mental health, it's, it's, it's even more, more important. And the lack of language skills was um, an often cause of frustration, of feeling voiceless, of feeling um, undermined, or feeling um, there were often expressions of feeling like a child in adults' world, where you are unable to express your feelings or emotions. And this is very important in, in the case of, again, uh, mental, mental health issues. And um, this uh, communication deficit and the related to it inability to get help led some of the Polish migrants to look for help uh, back in Poland or look for um, help on Polish-based websites in cases of mental uh, health issues. And even for migrants who had some level of, um, of English, who are able to arrange their GP visits or go to seek help in professionals, uh, they stated that it was very difficult for them to uh, talk about their, um, uh, about their psychological well-being because it uh, engages a uh, vocabulary and a language of deep, deep emotions that can be most precisely stated in, in your mother tongue. It's, it's difficult to talk about things like that in the uh, acquired language. Um, uh, and on, on that, um, even migrants who are looking for help uh, with uh, mental health issues in the, um, amongst um, Polish community workers or uh, Polish um, um, private psychologists or, or uh, GPs, whenever they were um, referred to mental health charities, they often, uh, and even if they contacted those charities, they were very often dis uh, discouraged by the fact that there was nobody they could talk to in their uh, own language, so they would hang up or just not uh, not follow the um, the, the um, services. Uh, with this is related to um, another problem uh, of recognition of qualifications of Polish psychologists, and this process of recognition is very lengthy. It's um, is expensive and is very complex. So there are a lot of Polish psychologists who are educated back in Poland who you know, have masters in psychology. Um, who are uh, willing to help Polish migrants but are unable because of their qualifications uh, not being recognized. And um, another thing is uh, associated with interpreting services. Even though they're um, widely available and most of interviewees stated that they, they were aware of the availability of those services, 
In terms of um, mental health issues, many migrants stated that uh, it was very difficult to open up and talk about their problems in the presence of the third person in the room. And uh, additionally, uh, because even though the Polish community is quite uh, quite large and it's the largest in, in Northern Ireland, um, in certain parts of Northern Ireland, Polish community is still small. So they, were, they feared that whatever problems they were talking about um, would be a topic of, of the local gossip, even though um, most of Polish migrants know that interpreters are bound by, anon by the uh, anonymity and, and confidentiality. Um, at the same time, there were some instances, um, some Polish migrants uh, referring to lack of empathy and uh, maybe arrogance sometimes from the side of the in interpreters, which uh, could also be looked, uh, looked at in, uh, as a uh, recommendation. One of the most important factors contributing to uh, mental health in migrants or anybody, any em employees is the effects of work characteristics and work situation. Uh, so in case of um, Polish migrants, we see the effects of downward mobility, underemployment, because many, we don't have exact figures on this, uh, but many migrants are highly skilled, uh, but as we see, they, uh, they, will, um, they usually work in, in kind of elementary and occupations. Um, and this seems to be the case particularly with the uh, Eastern, Eastern European, uh, European migrants. Uh, and these migrants work often in very monotonous jobs, in, in dirty, unpleasant environments, long hours, shift work, agency work, very precarious um, um, uh, contracts and e examples of um, working workplaces where Polish migrants are concentrated are slaughterhouses, recycling, food processing factories and, and chicken factories. And unfortunately, many men who work in these jobs, many Polish men react to their uh, really difficult working conditions by drinking throughout the uh, weekends. Um, this Long working hours affect people's um, migrants' private lives, uh, relationships, as um, my colleague mentioned, but it also um, prevents them to fully engage um, in, in society and it prevents often them to, for example, attend English language courses, which uh, is then like a vicious circle that they will be unable to look for any other job opportunities, so are kind of stuck in, in this um, a difficult uh, circumstance, circumstances. And uh, also there is, uh, we can see the effects of economic downturn. So many industries in which Polish migrants were con concentrated were hit by recession and economic downturn. And this, this may um, and just affect that these migrants are now kind of, um, the only work they can find is very short contracts with, with agencies, by agencies. Uh, but at the, um, 2004, 5, 6, uh, many Polish migrants were actively recruited by Northern Irish employees uh, back in, in, in Poland. It's very, um, very important to, to note that even though on the first sight the Polish and Northern Irish cultures uh, seem very similar, it's very important to, to state the differences uh, in order for Polish migrants to be able to receive help and also for the local practitioners to be able to provide the, the adequate um, help. So there are different levels of differences. Um, there's a, a difference in perception of and reference to mental health, and I'm going to give you some examples, and differences in perception of, um, of the health system and the receiving country and the country of uh, origin. I'm not sure if I'll be able to uh, get into details about the differences in paths of bereavement, but then we can talk about it afterwards in the discussion. So, for example, in the in terms of uh, the differences in perception and reference to mental health issues, um, Polish migrants were reported to um, to use different ways of describing uh, common mental health disorders. Um, so, if there's a GP who is um, used to certain keywords used by uh, local people describing um, symptoms of depression, for example, a low mood or n not having energy to, to, to work, uh, may not uh, come across those keywords in, um, during the visit of a Polish migrant. And um, so, uh, they are... Um, 
they use the language of more indirect um, uh, description of, of symptoms. So for example, um, they could uh, say, I feel um, a devil on my chest, or I feel my heart is heavy. Uh, I feel a, a pressure on my chest. Uh, some, some ways of describing physical uh, um, symptoms of mental health uh, problems as um, um, physical disabilities. So this, uh, this is one of the things that needs to be noted in, in, in terms of um, uh, foreign-born migrants, and not only Polish migrants, but also uh, having a look at, at uh, the background of, um, of migrants. At the same time, there is a level of shame and taboo uh, associated with mental health illness, and uh, probably even more so in Poland than in Northern Ireland. It's, it's getting better now in, in Poland, but it still is a topic of, of shame, which uh, may mean that Polish migrants who are at the, um, at the beginning of the, or at the uh, early stage of uh, mental health disorders may not be willing to, um, to, to reveal that. Um, and talking about um, the more uh, sy systemic differences, it takes some time for migrants to orient themselves in the way that the local system works. And it's, it's uh, even down to the fact that uh, there are differences in referrals. So in, um, in Poland, there are some specialists that Polish, that Polish people can go s directly to, for example, psychiatrists. Um, and when, uh, when they arrive to, to Northern Ireland, they realize that you have to go to a GP first to get a referral. All those differences are very important to be um, um, framed for Polish migrants to, to understand that. Uh, there are also more subtle differences because, for example, in Poland, um, there is a recognized overprescription of antibiotics. So if a Polish migrant goes to a, po to a local GP, uh, has a certain expectation that will receive antibiotics. So once a Polish migrant doesn't receive antibiotics, they feel that their illness hasn't been recognized, hasn't been appreciated. Some uh, migrants even refer to it as discrimination, saying that if it was a local patient, they probably would have got that antibiotics, but I'm not recognized as a, as a proper patient. So this is one of the issues that is uh, very important to be recognized. And one of the interviewees that um, from our study uh, um, told us a story of a, a man, a Polish man coming with his daughter to a doctor. And I know, um, again, had an ex expectation saying, um, I know what she has, she had it back in, in Poland, I know what sort of antibiotics she needs. And the doctor said, no, I don't think she needs antibiotics. This is something that we could cure with, uh, with other therapy. Um, and he became very angry, you know, thinking that, again, he hasn't been, um, that the illness hasn't been recognized. But this doctor, she knew the difference between Poland and Northern Ireland. So she said, I know that in Poland you would have got antibiotics for that. But after testing your daughter, I can really see that this is not necessary. And she said that by solely this sentence, she changed his complete attitude. So even the recognition of the GP site that uh, there is a difference could really change that relationship and lack of trust between uh, GPs and um, and Polish migrants. And also and the, another difference um, is that in, in Poland there is more, um, more focus on the general health and sort of trying to um, preventive medicine. Whereas, uh, so Polish migrants are expecting that when they go to a GP, they can talk about their overall health and uh, they will, their relationship will be more personal. And whenever they come and they have 10 minutes per visit and they are under impression that they can talk only about one problem per visit, again, they feel that it's very impersonal and that uh, this relationship isn't going um, as smoothly as it would have in, in Poland. So those examples are very important to, even for, uh, on both sides, for GPs and also for Polish migrants to know that there are, there are differences um, in, in those terms. Um, because our research showed that um, many Polish migrants in case of illness uh, prefer to travel back to Poland to, to receive help. And sometimes they are, um, well, most of the times they, they go to private, uh, seek help in, um, in private um, practices. Some, as I mentioned earlier, uh, use Polish-based websites um, or, or look for a Polish private psychologists in here. However, worryingly, there are also um, cases of uh, Polish migrants uh, self-diagnosing themselves and looking um, for medication in online pharmacies. And there was one case of a migrant that I uh, interviewed who, um, who 
diagnosed herself with depression and she went online and found online pharmacy and got herself uh, antidepressants without any professional prescription. Um, this case was also related with the fact that um, she feared that she would be lab labeled by her GP as crazy and um, she already had a um, history of um, domestic violence in, in, her, um, in, in her family. So she was worried that if she was diagnosed with depression, her children would be taken away from her. So there's also that uh, understanding of, of how the social services are working here. This is something uh, that Polish migrants should, uh, should most likely be um, educated about. Um, in terms of other findings, as Anne um, mentioned, there are um, levels of addictions, um, alcohol abuse, um, in most cases drinking at home, and there's a violence associated with, um, with that alcohol abuse, drug abuse, and also worryingly there were indications of um, quite easy access um, for, uh, to drugs at, home, at, at workplaces uh, for Polish migrants. So um, mainly in factories, so that's, that's something that uh, probably could be also addressed. And um, gambling amongst uh, Polish migrants, a sense of a magic escape from the routine work that's, uh, that, they're, um, that they're doing. Uh, also cases of, um, um, of um, cluster suicides. Uh, the most recent in Nuri, uh, in Craigavon, Balamina, West Belfast, um, uh, amongst Polish, uh, Polish migrants. Um, high level of common mental disorders, uh, depression and also uh, agoraphobia being diagnosed in uh, Polish migrants. Um, as I mentioned earlier, cases of domestic violence. Um, and some of them already took place in Poland and they were brought in, into Northern Ireland. Um, and also the case of uh, poorly planned migration, as Anne um, mentioned earlier, Polish migrants were at the beginning of after 2004, when uh, started coming here, they were actively recruited back in Poland. And um, I really appreciated uh, Joanne's um, contribution also to showing those, uh, this advertising, how, how it happens, you know, advertising to it for, for migrants to come to Canada. Well, that was the case for Polish migrants, uh, for, for Polish people in Poland. They, uh, they were um, faced with a lot of advertising from the Northern Irish um, employers. So very often, um, there wasn't that much thought given to migration. It was very often even an overnight decision because um, at, uh, at the time of uh, 2004, the level of unemployment in Poland was um, above 20%. So having no job, being in long-term unemployment, being faced with a, with a job opportunity in Northern Ireland, many people didn't even you know, think for too long. It was, uh, it was sort of seen as a project that um, we will go there, work for a couple of months, earn some money for a house, for the wedding, for, um, um, for continuing studies, and then we will return. So talking about this uh, view of Polish migrants as workers, they, in many cases, they also um, underestimated their, their human side. They haven't realized that uh, they, you can't just go to a place, work for a couple of months or a year and go back. They, um, as a side effect, you know, you might get to get to like the place, or you might uh, fall in love, or you can um, uh, think about sending your children to school. Really, you know, settle and and uh, and get to get to like the place. So the um, it's not as easily reversible migration as many people think at the at the start. Um, and also impact of migration on children. We haven't interviewed children, uh, we only interviewed migrants, but there were many statements of trauma that children went through when they were brought to uh, here. So many of them couldn't speak the language, so they were brought to schools where they weren't understood, nobody could understand them. There were a lot of, a lot of problems with Polish children that probably could be researched in, um, in more details in, in the future. So in, in uh, terms of our um, research, um, we also, in the end of interviews, we asked um, our interviewees to, um, to, to give us some sort of indications of, of interventions, what could be done to improve the well-being of Polish migrants. So I'll just read you those, um, those suggestions. 
engage Polish migrants in activities outside work and maybe try to cater those activities uh, more around their uh, irregular work hours. So this is uh, in terms of sports, but also English language uh, courses. Engage Polish volunteers in mental health charities. So try to engage uh, Polish migrants who speak English to uh, volunteer and help um, in, in those charities. Uh, improve training for Polish entrepreneurs, especially those who are um, who are dealing with migrants with mental health issues. Uh, translate information booklets. It has been done already uh, to some extent, but also try to um, try to cater them and uh, tailor towards different groups of, of uh, migrants, different migrants, not only Polish migrants. Um, there were some suggestions to prepare um, welcome, so-called welcome packs for migrants who. Uh, come to Northern Ireland to explain to them that this is how the system works. You, you, you have to go to a GP if you have mental health issues. You have to go to GP for any other referrals to specialists. Um, expand cultural awareness guidelines for uh, health, uh, health and so social care staff. So not only about the sort of diet or habits or religion of migrants, but also about their attitudes towards uh, mental health issues. And also information campaign amongst Polish migrants because uh, there's a lot of information that they need still in, in order to, to, to get on in, in the society. So we've been talking about lots of like negative impacts of migration on mental health, but um, we would like to finish off with a positive impact because migration had hugely positive impacts also on, on, on Polish migrants. So most importantly, it's been... Uh, offering them a um, way of escaping poverty back in Poland. Poverty, unemployment, lack of, lack of housing. And there is still four to five, uh, the wages are four to five times higher, higher here. Mm -hmm.